o'clock, and I'm thrilled that together with my educational charity, Moby, I'm teaming up with the Mayor of London to host and deliver this amazing new design challenge. An opportunity for young Londoners to have a real impact on their city. Honestly, I'm absolutely buzzing about this. We want young Londoners to be really inspired and come up with innovative ideas to tackle some of the most pressing issues the city is facing when it comes to the provision of high quality, affordable, energy efficient and truly sustainable housing. Now it's essential that young people have a say in shaping their future homes and the places and the communities in which they live. And they never fail to amaze me with their imagination, their passion, their talent when I ask them to design truly innovative homes within a master plan. Now I set up Moby to create a generational shift in home building, to transform an industry that needs to be cutting edge, pushing the boundaries of innovation and making our homes the greenest in the world. The way we build and use our homes today is currently really damaging to the environment and that really has to change and fast. We need homes that will work with nature, not destroy it. Now Moby and its partners provide the education and the training needed to bring about this massive change. And who knows, maybe you might take up a career in architecture, design, construction and the built environment. For me, that would be really incredible because we need new and exciting talent. Now very rarely in London do opportunities like this come up to look at a part of the city that needs to be transformed. And that's what we're looking to do at the Royal Docks. The Mayor's moving City Hall there, that makes a whole new shift of difference for East London. And the brief that we've created asks young Londoners to show house builders and developers and planners what kind of homes and communities they really want to live in on sites close to the new City Hall and the East of London's Royal Docks. This is unbelievably exciting and in a few months time I genuinely can't wait to look at the entries with my fellow judges. I really hope you enjoy the challenge. Good luck and have fun. Welcome today. So today's webinar, uh, webinar three, uh, we're going to look at sketch development uh, of, the, of the concept model itself. So the agenda for the day uh, is first of all, we're going to spend about 10 minutes just looking at uh, the previous webinar, which was which is SketchUp in a nutshell, just to go over a few uh, bits and pieces just to bring you back up to speed. Uh, but today's uh, webinar is predominantly going to be about 40 minutes. We're going to be looking at how we develop the concept, how we can create components, and then have a little look about how we will actually import objects. Uh, on the conclusion of the webinar, there'll be about a 10 minute question and answer process. So for this webinar, um, I've created a separate SketchUp file, which is based on the one that we created last week with a little bit more added to it. Uh, obviously that uh, we do have the links to the various sites in order for you to refresh uh, what's required and what, and what the changes are to the challenge itself. Um, and, and how and how that will evolve. Um, we also, uh, if we look at the concepts phase, so we've uh, this week, as I say, we're looking at sketch development. The uh, the final two webinars we have in the concept phase. Next week we're looking at uh, how we can create and import components. Uh, that will enable us to actually develop develop the final model, import materials and trees and people to actually uh, communicate how the project is going to look. And then we're going to, on the final webinar of the concept phase, which is on the 9th of February, is to use at the uh, looking at the layout book and how we will actually present our, 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 our scheme. On the 16th of February, February we have our first uh, workshop um, and then that will then be uh, then that will lead us on to the development phase which I can talk to you more about uh, close closer to the time so as far as the uh, the workshop is concerned which is on the 16th, 16th of February it's at the University of East London um, the webinar, it's the, the workshop itself is going to be for three hours from 12.30 to 3.30. Um, and what we will do in that, in that uh, workshop is going over 
the first two webinars and then obviously give a little bit of, of hands-on help so that you can actually become more confident in how you're going to be using the program and to actually engage with your pupils. To support the uh, webinar I'm, I'm delivering today, um, I've added a YouTube link um, and there and there's also a series of files which you can go into and download which again will give you a little bit of uh, of hands-on experience of how you will actually will use use SketchUp in addition to what we're showing you just as a reminder obviously the fact for uh, the site it's site it is site a um, you can see from from the illustration here the site itself is divided in, in into four equal areas with a canal down the middle um, and, and the central point here is the existing listed building last week we talked about the disability and equalities act for 2010 and regard the kinds of things that you really need to think about when you are designing your home for the future it's got to be inclusive. It's got to enable for, for, for people of, of, of all abilities and to use. So not just for this, this is not all people's home. This, 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 this is for everyone. And so what comes with that are a series of, of, of criteria. So we're going to look at how we create a staircase in the first part of the videos. Um, and then we'll go on to actually de developing the model itself further like all designs they don't start with a computer they start with this with it with 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 a sketch pad um, and and a pencil for you to actually start communicating and thinking about how the space is going to work so we need to think about the kind of zones that we're going to use what's actually going to be required and have a have an idea of how how the space will, will, would be assembled so once we have an idea of how the space will be assembled, we can think of, well, how, how if we create multiple units, how they would be assembled. So what I'm showing you re regarding uh, for, the, for, for the module development is last week we actually created a base unit, which was, which was, for us, which was an 80 square meter single person apartment. What we're going to look at today is how we can then build on top of that. And so, you know, we're going to have a have, have a what, what what I classify as 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 inverted living. So what happens is it's going to be a two-story building that that we will apply to the the base unit, and then there will be a staircase which would include a a, a lift, so that so that we can actually um, enable people who 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 do have a disability to actually access all parts of the building itself. So as we've got, when, when we look at the space, we need to we need to analyze it. We, we talked about this in, in, in a little bit more detail. We actually model this up um, in, uh, web, in 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 the in webinar two. And what what I've done from that, we've actually developed the the the, 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 kind, of, the, the kind of concept of how these modules can actually fit together to to actually create this kind of environment. So where we start, we, we, we have a base unit. We're going to have a left-hand unit. We're going to have a right-hand unit. This is a single-person unit. We can then consider how the landscaping is going to be regard, regard, regarding green roofs. Uh, we can extend with, with a lift shaft at the back. And then we can then start adding the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, upper, the upper floor module. Which 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 is a um, which which is more which is more of a family home. So it, it's run about it's, it's, so we're going from an eighty square base unit to about one hundred and twenty upper floor unit with staircase. And so by ha having these modules and putting them together and how how they would go together, we can actually formulate our design ideas. And so consequently, what happens is we en we end up with this kind of modular kind of instruction modules which are made in a factory delivered to site and assemb and assembled on site this sheet just gives you a little overlay reg regarding regarding the very shortcuts that we use in sketchup and so what we're going to start off with in our first uh, 
portion of the of the uh, webinar is we're going to start with with the the base unit which we which we created in in webinar two we're going to formulate by adding two new bases and from that we can then start assembling the 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 upper, the, the upper modules first thing we need to look at is how we can create a staircase and and how we and how we actually would, would actually create a, create a component and and embed that within the staircase module and then we're going to conclude by creating a massing unit what a massing unit will do is like an outside sleeve which can actually be built on site so it it so the modules that we're creating off site can actually fit into them and what they will do they will actually give us uh, uh, the facility to absorb to, to, to absorb carbon fr from the atmosphere and to actually add what, what we classify as, as, as thermal massing to the building itself. And finally what happens is you can see from the illustration how, how, all, the, how all this will go together. The final episode In this element of today's webinar, what we're going to do is that uh, you can see I've already created a, uh, a part of my staircase. So what I want to show you is, is, is the tips and tricks of how we actually make a staircase. So first of all, what we need to do is that uh, is I have a staircase which has a which, which has equal rises of 166 and a going up 250 in order that we can create a staircase that's suitable for um, what we classify as ambient disabled. So there are various components that, that we need to think about and restrictions that we need to work within. But I won't go into that in much detail right now, but the principles are of this. So first I'm going to draw a rectangle to the end, and then I'm going to extrude that rectangle by 1200 millimeters. I'm then going to add another rectangle, this time on the face. I can type in the values uh, of 1000 comma 166.6 and hit enter and I'm going to extrude out again to 250 millimeters. Okay, so what I can do now, I can then start to actually work out uh, how many steps and rise I'm going, to, I'm going to require. So what I have for my model, I have three meters uh, from one floor level to the next. So to convert that um, into equal number of risers, um, I'm going to end up with 18 risers, each having, each having a rise of 166 millimeters. So now that I've started this, this element, uh, of the model itself, what I'm going to do is I am going to use my pencil mode and I'm going to come from the end point and simply what I'm going to do, I'm going to follow the blue and red axes. So first of all, I'm going to come up 166.6, enter, then I'm going to continue on the red axes of 250, enter, and I'm going to repeat this process all the way through until I get the parameters of my staircase. And so consequently I can continue along 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 this line until I have my nine rises. So I've got one, two, three. So I'll continue three more times, six more times, sorry, and, and to, in order for, for me to get the, the, the desired height. So each time I need to make sure that I'm following
make a mistake just hit just hit uh, escape so what I need to do is that once I've created my profile I need to continue by making the polygon and now if I use the pull tool and let me give that a dimension of 1000 what I have is my second part of my staircase and so what we need to do now we need to actually use the arrow tool let's select the whole shape and let us go on and make component so components are numbered in sequence or we can rename them let me just change this to com complete step with 18 equal rises thousand high by one thousand wide width so by adding this information it, it actually brings it into our into our documentation with um, one thousand by two two zero zero landing there's other elements we can add to it, but let's hit on and let's call it create. And you see that what it what I have, I have my complete staircase with all my information added within my model. So what we're going to do now, now that we've got our staircase made, we're going to then actually create create this stair the staircase enclosure. So what I've done is I've actually drawn my rectangular shape of 4.8 by 2.4. I've extruded by 200 millimeters and now I'm going to just take an offset and pull in and put a diameter of 200 millimeters. Hit escape, use the pencil tool, make sure that we're on the green line and both points and then what I can do I can now extract the wall once I've deleted and I'm going to pull this wall up here uh, first of all to three meters Let's hit enter and so you see what I have I've created my my staircase uh, I can delete this element of the model now which I don't I no longer require these this area here which I've created in order to offset so let's just use the eraser tool to get rid of those lines and that okay so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to color code this element so uh, this is only for, for, for clarity and, and for um, uh, so that we can define uh, our shapes when we put them together so let's just go for colors so let me just make this all to be in yellow and let's just apply this to everything within that shape so you can see that what it's done it's added everything um, what I've done let me click on and select it let me select so it's going to be the stair tab and what I have I have my staircase which falls in within three meters so let me grab my staircase component move and let me just drag it from there and I can place it inside my space let's just check this correctly formed 
exactly where I want it to be. I need to pull it a little bit more. There we go. Fine. So I've now got my staircase component. I can go in, I can actually get doors into here. So let us go into the viewpoint and let us escape for a moment. And let's put an opening in to add a door into our, into our model. So we can bring doors in. We uh, meet next week is going to go into more detail about how we use the extensions and how we bring doors in. Um, I brought a couple of doors into to this model itself. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to use my pencil tool. Let me consider that. Uh, I wish to add a doorway to here. So let me go in on the, on the face. Let me put a height in of 2100. Zero, zero. Enter. Let me come along the, uh, the red axis. Let's put a value in of 900 millimeters. Hit enter and then come back down to the on edge. I can now push my doorway out and I am now created an opening within my model and I can now add a doorway in from the Trimble library or I can create a doorway. So let's go on and, and actually very quickly make 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 a door. There's two ways I can do it. I can actually uh, draw on the model itself, or I can, or I can, or I can create a component. So let's go to tabs. Let's let let's call it door tab. Now what I can do is I can actually draw a door to, to, to the parameters that I wish to create. So first of all, I'm going to just draw a simple rectangle. Let's go to review settings. So we can draw offline. We can we we can create a door. So let's add a doorway. Blue axis, two one zero zero. Enter. Green axis, nine hundred. Enter. And I can very quickly. So there is my first slab. Let me go into 3D. So there's my my panel. Let me simply come to let me extrude it, the framework. Let's give this a value of 100 millimeters. Extrude. Let me go for an offset. Let me come offset to be um, 25 millimeters into that. Let me use the pencil tool. Tool. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to extrude the 
panel itself. Push it back marginally. Let's put it back, push it back by 15 millimeters. Let me rotate. Let me repeat the process again on the other side. And the eraser. And use the push command. Again, push it back, 15. Um, and I can add door furniture to this, to this later on. Uh, meanwhile, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some materials to this. Let me go for wood. Let me add a wooden panel. Rotate and simply add the paint bucket. And now finally to actually make this as a component I can left click on the screen, everything is highlighted in blue, click on make component and let's just call this door 900 by 2100 um, and then hit create, create. And what I can do is I can if I look into my components, let me shrink this so you can see it better. You can see that what I have, I have all my components listed. And there is the new door, which, which we have. Um, and I can then take that door and I can drag and I can place that within my model. Let me go on to plan view. There's the door, let me just rotate it. Let me go back and let me drag this. Escape. Go back. Position this roughly in the three D. Okay, rotate. There's my door, and now I can take my door and I can push it into my opening. Very simple, effective way of putting a door in. Let me just pull it slightly back into the rebate. So I have now my staircase component. So what I need to do is I need to add a landing that connects to the top of that staircase. Let's go O. can drag say I have a landing there to my staircase so I can put a second staircase in and then I then I can extract let's extract these walls upwards Let's, let's, let's pull them up by another 3,000. Enter. And so consequently, what I have, and now I can actually take the staircase and I can add in the second staircase in order to fill the space. So I'm coming from ground floor to first floor I'm going to take the staircase. I can do two ways. I can select the component that I have. Then I could go edit. Then I can hit copy. 
like it hit paste escape and again what I'll do is I'm going to extend the floor that landing pull it across so it intersects my wall and then finally I'm going to extract my staircase up again by another 3000 okay so I can add doors and windows into here let me just check my dimensions are correct good that's 9000 Okay, so it's always good to go into dimensions to check to make sure that they fit. And let me delete that when I finished. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything in there and I'm going to right click and I'm going to make that as a group. So we're going to create another module uh, to, to, to our model. Uh, which is going to consist of the upper, the upper floors uh, for our uh, uh, for for our for our home. Um, so what I'm doing is is I'm using the uh, uh, the tape measure tool to actually set up my coordinates. So I can come along, I can, and so if I come up, three thousand two hundred. Enter. And you can see what it will do. It will actually will align 3,000 between each of my floors. Okay. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a rectangular tool. And I'm going to go to the guide points and I have a wall. I'm going to do the same again for the lower section. What I'm going to do is first of all let us make sure that the close on components. Let's go to tags. Let's go plus. And let's just call this module E. And again, what we're going to do is we're going to color code these. So I'm going to go to the paint bucket. First of all, let us just extract the first one. So for this particular case of the model, what I don't want to do is to, is to actually go, in, go into a lot of uh, uh, detail. So I'm just going to keep this purely as, a, as, 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 as an outdoor shape. So I'm, I'm going to extract it and, and I'm going to extract it. I'm going to give a dimension of 9,000 600 and hit enter. Let us apply the paint bucket. Let's go to the colors. So let's make this red. So the way that I want this design, I actually want, we're, we're going to go for what classified it as, as inverted living. So on my sketches, what I have, I planned out for the, uh, for, for the uh, first floor area, that's going to be used as my bedrooms. 
um, and therefore the uh, first the, the the upper floor is actually going to be living space so what I want to have is is to have a mod to have a module which is actually offset so let's just pull so instead of coming in out to 9.6 millimeters I'm going to pull it back slightly so it's going to come but it's going to come down to six to 6.5 meters I can add on elements this I want to create a new component this time I'm going to I'm going to simulate this component here that, that, that I've used as a sun shading because of this area here is going to be used for my for my bedrooms so let me just do a little offset come in 200 mil enter Let's push that back to nine to six thousand three hundred six three zero zero. Enter. So I can I can simply keep that element within my module itself. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring a doorway. Um, so on my if I go to my extract. I brought in a component so if I if I look at my components there is a bifolded doors which, which I brought in and let me just add those doors and drag them and place these doors within my model so let me go to a front view in 3d what I can do is I can use the scale tool in order to manipulate the size so it fits in within my model itself escape let's go O and return so you can see I have that shape created let's go to edit let's go delete guidelines so let me go on to I'm going to use the tape measure again so I'm going to select come along And let me just put in my dimensions of 4,800. Enter. So let us add. Let's let's create a new component to form the front section of here. Let me. You notice what I'm doing. I'm actually working off the model itself. In all cases. I'm going to, so I have my uh, framework on the front. 
I'm going to put an offset of 100 millimeters initially. From section forward by 1500. Enter. So I can select and delete. Let us just make these marginally bigger all the way around so let's pull upwards by 300 millimeters sideways 200 mil O to rotate pull command 200 mil. The bottom section I'm just going to push it down marginally by 50 millimeters. There was a lever trip hazard. Let me use the paint bucket. Woods. Let's use this wood. Let's just apply that to all the sides. Stay in the paint bucket. So we need to move around until we get the shape and then just apply it to the, to the front face. We can do, do other things like cut holes into this to add lights into it for the time being. Uh, all I've done is create a very simple component. Let me circulate it. Let me give this a name. First of all, we need to get rid of Delete the guidelines. Grab the whole space. Let's create a component. And let's just call this call this sun shading one five hundred by five two by three two. We can go back and get edit this if it's incorrect. Let's hit create. And now what I can do is I have that as a module, and then I can actually drag this, and I can place this on my model itself. Let me go to my front view. add it to my model that way escape okay, there we go back again 3d check everything in 2d then 3d so we have our upper floor module we have our lower floor modules um, if I, I can check the dimensions behind this, but basically what it's going to give me, it's going to give me my overall space. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, 
finally is I'm going to select those elements and I'm going to right click and I'm going to make them as a group and so consequently what, what allow making a group does it allows me to actually pull everything and place it within my model itself so what I've created now is I have my second module I can place that onto my house I can group all those together and now what I can do is I can actually create multiple units of so I have a ground floor unit and I have my multiple floor units as well So the final element of today's uh, webinar is to create a, a massing unit. Uh, what happens is within uh, off-site construction modules like these ones with only 200 millimeters thick to them, they actually don't actually have the, capa the capacity to uh, retain energy. Um, so we can do various things. Uh, curtain wall assistance do it to a certain degree, but the best thing for creating massing is actually concrete. Um, and the fact is because the way that technology is, 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 is evolving now, we can actually have lightweight contract concrete which, which does a similar kind of thing. So what I've done, I've actually created this, uh, the, the shape of a building. And what we're going to do is that we're going to extract it. Now simply what I've done, I've used the pen tool to actually draw around the shape itself. Uh, once we have that, we can then uh, create, create, create an offset. So for example, if I go to the offset button here, let me create an offset inside here. Let, let, let's uh, and do something like that. Um, what I can do now, I can then apply the various materials uh, using the paint bucket. So for example, I might add glass to that particular piece. The rest of it, I might add concrete to. But for the time being, what we're gonna do is I'm going to take that module and I'm going to drag it. Uh, so using the push pull tool, let me rotate my model. Let us remove all these dimensions. Don't, we don't require those now. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this whole module all the way through. Let me pull the centerpiece out. Let me pull this and give this a dimension of six meters. And let me pull my framework and also make that six meters. So we have this massing unit. Other things that we can do, uh, for example, one of the things you might want to consider uh, is to actually have some kind of uh, a green wall that will actually absorb carbon um, and so let me just take the offset button let me just take this face let me create an offset of 600 millimeters all the way around the outside let me just push back slightly so about 100 millimeters um, and what we can do let us add a material to here glass mirrors let's go to landscaping um, and let's just add vegetation blur to here um, and so what we have we have a, we have a module so let us close the material down. Let's go back to our tags. Let's add a tag and let's just call this uh, massing unit. So let's grab the whole shape. Let us right 
right click we can make component and let's just call this massing unit we can go back and we can do things too but, but from, from a concept point of view um, so what happened was is that so we can take this and now finish off we can actually add this to our model so we can drag it we can position it let's go to the elevations let's drag it down so there are things that we can do to our massing unit we can add windows we could cut openings into it let's hit escape let's have a look in 3d to make sure we position it correctly come on up circulate and now what we have we have our unit which mixes in we can add doorways we can cut openings into here uh, this staircase unit probably wants to move um, in that direction uh, but the situation is what we what we have we have the semblance of our initial unit so that ends today's webinar uh, next week's webinar uh, we will talk about uh, important materials and then finishing the model off be before we actually export it into uh, into the layout book thank you all very much up today is literally ju just just to go through an outline of webinar four which is going to be on Wednesday the 2nd of February and that's going to be presented by Mita uh, and what we're going to be doing within that webinar is that we will uh, again we will do a little review over 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 over, web over webinar three there will then be a 40 minute of how we would actually populate the model because what we're doing we're actually now starting to prepare our model in, in order to actually make our presentation so we need to bring in things like people trees extend the landscape uh, we might consider multiplying a few a few modules together so we can actually create so we can create a little uh, housing housing unit and a community so we will look at how how we would create scenes we we would go into a little bit more depth regarding the bucket tool and and for in, in for for important textures spelt incorrectly, um, and then we would actually look at creating an an object uh, to to uh, and how we'd import import the model. We we'll then also look at used in Trimble warehouse and importing objects, and that'll be concluded again as always by a ten minute Q and A. So here is the link for the, for the various files and uh, I look forward to seeing you all uh, for webinar 4. Thank you all very, very much.